Stock Nerds Market Lovers, there's a lot to talk about. As, as we were starting uh, the show, just getting warmed up, talking to each other, saying, hey, Hunter, how's it going? I was about to tell the fellas, yeah, wow, this pullback is um, this morning was on uh, kind of really no, no heavy ticks. But as soon as we started um, saying hi to each other, ticks come down to minus 1,200 is a big tick. Um, and the markets you can see are just kind of, they just kind of had that little whoosh. Now, whether that's a momentary whoosh and pause, or uh, the pause that refreshes the downside a little bit lower. We will see as the show develops. That whoosh was the break of Monday's lows. Oh, All the stocks oh, were there. Oh, there we go. That explains Stop. That. Look at that. Setting Don up. Okay, I love it. That's a, that is the way to start the show. That's right. Whoosh. Yeah. Whoosh. whoosh. I still With wish he had his cool purple <laughs> glasses on. With a whoosh. Yes, I, I have forgotten about Don's glasses. So anyway, but then I wanted to talk about... Um, I was going to start the show with, you know, uh, sometimes stocks just go down. Now, this was, uh, this was clearly stop triggered the way Don just described it. Uh -huh. Sometimes when markets go down, like yesterday, it wasn't really on heavy ticks. On, when I mean yesterday, today's Friday. What is today's date? Today's the uh, 18th. 18th. Taping uh, morning of the 18th here, 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, and on Thursday, I mean, the, the market was heavy, but it wasn't on these big, whooshy, to the downside type ticks. And sometimes it's just the absence of buyers. And so I, and I, and I, and you're going to say, Tim, well, there's a lot of headline news out there. And as someone, when the markets are active, who like, I, and, and I self admit, like to know what's going on, right? So I've got a couple of Twitter feeds because the Twitter feeds will tell you, like, you'll see price happen mm -hmm. in the news, Danny. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I'm going to, I want to go to the couple of Twitter feeds that I go to. To try to find out what what is happening, like what just it's a great search engine if you know how to use yes, it. Yes, but it's exhausting, and I'm not I'm not being facetious. It's exhausting, and and I want to do a little practicality here to start the show. So if you are sick of chasing headlines, like you think you have good setups in stocks, they're not working out, you're headline chasing. Um, I want to show you something I think that's really useful, and I covered it in Wednesday's video. Before we get into um, some and, of the... And by the way, headline chasing, normally that's already priced in. You've, by the time it right. makes a headline, the move's already... Yeah, been in, and in without being price. cynical, someone might say, how is all this Ukraine stuff not priced in? And I think you're getting a mix here. You're getting a mix of uh, Eastern European politic and what's happening there, and you're also getting a mix of Fed. There's three Fed speakers oh, yeah. today. And so, but let me show you the... Um, let me show you what's developed here recently. And um, we're going to start, my friends, here. I haven't talked about this probably a year, maybe more, since 2020 when it became irrelevant. The VIX futures. So, um, and I'm going to start talking about it if it starts producing. Sorry, results. Was, oh, that was is that okay? Bad. I was like, is that, is that <laughs> nope. feedback? That was me. Excuse me. That oh, was, yep. Okay. Oh, no no worries. We're all good. I was Continue. like, I hear yeah. me. Yeah. I, I was about to say, what was that? Two Tims, one show. Can't Whoa. Ah, <laughs> imagine. <two Tim. laughs> is that the title of the day's show? Did we just it's do not, that? It's not twins. It's twims. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh, wow. Yes. All right. Sorry, guys. Continue. VIX futures. The VIX yeah. futures are inverted. And when, and by the way, I, there hasn't been any stoppage of the balance sheet. Like they're still printing, they're still buying, but it's all the talk now. It's all the rage, right? Like they're going to reduce the balance sheet. When they, inter <laughs> when they, when they introduced, Sorry, that was funny. <laughs> when they introduced all that um, um, money, money printing. Stimulus. And, thank you, stimulus. I'm Quantitative stick. easing. I, all those words, I literally left my brain at the same time. All the QE and stuff. Uh, the VIX futures and the put call ratio really became tough to use as tools because it obscured what was, you know, for, for about 10, 12 years, normal to me. And the VIX future... Well, were, what they did is manipulate n real economics for abnormal right. stuff. Right. So, yeah, so, monetary, yeah, modern monetary right, theory, right, so right, to speak. Right. And so, but now you've got this inversion taking place. And it's kind of important to understand what it represents. We have a ton of new viewers uh, to the, and listeners to the show. So the current contract is the March contract. That's a month-long contract. And you can see here, I'm going to now the April and the May contracts. And the, the current March contract is priced higher than the April contract. And that April contract is priced higher than um, the May contract. And that's a big deal. Because in most other worlds, you wouldn't pay more for something that expires sooner. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't pay more for milk that expires in two days then you would pay for milk that expires in 
two weeks. Well, the best an- analogy is uh, my six month auto policy mm-hmm. ought to be cheaper than my one month or two month. If if I've yeah. got a if my policy costs more for just one month, that means the insurance company is saying risk is right here right now, and it's right. very. There's very that's what that's and that's the key right there. What Danny said, risk is here, risk is now. So the market doesn't have well, the market's insurance right is the VIX. The or, insurance premiums is the VIX. are going up. Yes, and the market is telling you that if you want insurance in this market, it's going to cost you whether you want to buy puts on the spy, whether you want to buy uh, whether you want to short the spy, it's going to cost you. And so and and you know it's going to cost more because. They're charging more for the duration that's less than April and the duration that's less than May. Things are now cockamamie. And if you're like, Tim, I still don't get what you're saying. The used car market is cockamamie right now, where you could have owned a car for two to three years, and it's actually worth more than when you bought it because there is a shortage of automobiles. Supply and demand, yeah. Automobiles. And so um, that is not normal. Well, Tim, what is normal in this VIX futures? Normal is, well, this current month would be priced less than that April month, and that April month would be priced less than uh, that May month. An increasing slope because normally the longer you go out, the more time, the more risk. Just like a long-term bond's 20 years versus a two-year bond, you get a lot more risk. But we've seen this now. And I want to show you this chart. And these ATR charts are, are really helpful to me. For this, and they might be helpful to stockers. If you don't have the settings, more than happy to send them to you. Just email me, Tim at revereasset.com, or call Danny, uh, 855 Real Wealth. You'll get them uh, to you or email Danny. Uh, so, look, the, the, this represents the mean here, the 21 exponential moving average, plus one, two, and three, uh, minus one, minus two, minus three. Now, look, this is back in uh, November. And so you can see we come to the mean, and to me, the mean represents. Uh, the lowest risk point to go bullish on something, it, like you, or or short, like it's the 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 twenty one exponential moving average is kind of like that line of demarcation, and so if you're going to take off to the upside, you got to hold that. I want to buy close to that range. That means I don't want to buy extended at plus one or plus two, and then I want to see what happens. You can see the VIX traverses higher here, and if I put a chart, if I uh, put a comparison chart of spy, you would see spy come down. Then VIX hits the third ATR, it comes back down. But look at how the new year started. You come down to, and we've seen this now, time immemorial, come down to minus one ATR, hold minus one ATR, and then you make that move back up. And how did the year start the, for, for SPY, for all the indices? Really poorly, right? January was a really tough month in the markets. And so, but you see now you hit that third ATR, come down, hold minus one ATR, and you retake. And now you don't even get down the minus one ATR. You hold the mean, and now you're moving back up. And so if you don't want a headline chase, I, I, I'm telling you, you could just watch this chart. Like if you're like, Tim, I hate the news. The news is really depressing. Or the news, you know, like the news is meant to keep you glued, right? I mean, you got to stay on through the commercials. Like you, and, and it can't be like 60,000 planes landed today. Not one person hurt. Kitties were saved from trees that were stuck. Like they're not, <laughs> they're not reporting that. They're, they're reporting things that um, if it bleeds, it leads. And, and unfortunately, that's the sensationalism that is 2022 news. And you can say it, it's always been like that. We just, you just had fewer choices back in 1976. But um, I think it's wearing, it's, it, 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 it wears me out really quickly. And when I start finding myself uh, at 2 a.m., like this morning, it's 2 a.m., I'm feeding Graham, and I'm scrolling through Twitter. The Look, best like, time to be on Twitter. Right. <laughs> like, I'm like, and, and there's a couple people I've discovered with this Ukraine situation that are providing really good information. Like, they're, now granted, one of them works for RT, so I'm not really sure how good the, in, Russia Today. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm not 100% that, sure. That's your misinformation channel to figure out what they're trying to uh, feed yeah. us? Yeah, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so addicted right now. I'm, I'm headline chase, and I'm like, I should, I should probably talk about this because when you headline chase, uh, and I don't, you don't even have to put it to price. Like when you headline chase, it wears you out mentally, and then you'll miss these big moves. And by the way, VIX futures are not up big today. The VIX, this is not a big move. 
And, and I'm going to come back here to the indices. You can see the indices kind of bottomed out as we started the show. <coughs> I don't know if we cascade lower. Like, look, uh, if people start closing up their shorts into the close, you get a short covering you get a, rally. You get, a, you get a pretty vicious short covering rally. So for me to come in here, uh, 10, 17 Central, and say, we're going to hell and damnation, you want to be really careful about market pro uh, prognostications like this. It's all um, about the probabilities, but I can tell you right now, and Don will confirm later, I'm sure, uh, we're very defensive. Very yeah, defensive, right? right. And so it's, it's like a 50-50 crapshoot right now is what it feels. But speaking of craps. You're going to Hunter? What, what is, why would that be the assumption? <laughs> wow. That's messed up. Wait, let's, that feels let's, like workplace abuse. Can we, <laughs> he's right. Can, can we talk about that? <laughs> we're we're, we're oh, playing. I, I was going to dice games. Uh, and, and okay. You were going you, to dice games? Yeah, that's that's what craps gambler? are called. Are you a gambler? No, but that's what craps are called. And, yeah, and, yes, I know. And, and well, then, <laughs> it was a double entendre. Sort of can we get HR draw, at draw, Hunter's draw, expense? Draw. I'm going to have to call HR, man. Hunter, I'm sorry, man. I feel bad that That's your okay. uh, fellow employees at Revere Asset are uh... lump me in with crap. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm gonna get you know. a nasty howler now from me, mommy. That's right. Oh, <laughs> you, you should. Yeah, you, <laughs> I'm, yeah. well I'm deserved. Send me mommy a text <laughs> well, right now. Yeah, yeah well deserved. Up. If she, yeah, I, I'd I'd co-sign that letter she sends. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> so um, I want to talk DraftKings real quick, and this is interesting about Draft. So DraftKings is down. Was it down twenty percent still? A 19%, almost 20% on earnings today. And so DraftKings <laughs> is just another uh, stock lumped in with uh, growth destruction, which I'm going to get to Hunter too. But um, super into, like, you can look at Penn. Look at the destruction in Penn here. And, you know, if you want to um, compare them to, uh, and it's a fair comparison. So, I mean, Penn's destroyed here. DraftKings is getting destroyed. Uh, but look at LVS, right? It, not, oops, pause right there. Look at LVS. That's not, like the charts are so slow to react today. That's not, I mean, it's, it's off the highs. It's not destruction, no, like DraftKings. And then, like, what about um, wind? We'll just look at that. Not, not. I mean, we, we've seen worse, right? They're called DraftKings and Penn. So what's going on? And, and th this is going to lead into Hunter with some growth destruction and what's happening. But let me read this to you. So DraftKings introduced a new phrase called contribution positive contribution profit positive so when people re when companies report earnings it used to be you just had gap generally accepted accounting principles right mm -hmm. just like uh the law is the law uh but then there came a time where uh your facts aren't really facts you know it got a little squirmy there we could also introduce non-gap not yes and now non-gap non market whatever you hear that just think marketing so there's, there's a group of people out there that set what's known as the accounting standards, right? Just like there's medicine that's, you know, like we don't inject cyanide into people. Well, that's your fact. Cyanide injections are bad. but In, in moderate use. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. In yeah. some cultures, those facts aren't true. Which, like, what's the definition of the word facts? So, but general accepted accounting principles is kind of the backbone of earnings. And, and there was a reason why uh, for years, you wanted to stay away from markets that didn't participate in gap principles because uh, maybe their kind of companies are a sham. You can, if you can report and say anything, you can report and say anything. Mm -hmm. And people will give you dollars based on what you report and say anything with. Mm -hmm. but, then, but then we introduced non-gap, which means these aren't accepted. But now... And, and it got really um, almost hallucinogenic with non-GAAP. And then there was, there was a big crash uh, with markets. And now we are at the phase of life where we are introducing, and in credit to DraftKings, innovators in the accounting space. We now have contribution profit positive. Sweet baby Jesus. Like... Zach's even I'm scratching my head. Yeah, right man. Con so, um, con what is that contribution? Work? Contribution profit positive. And I want you to understand these companies. The reason why they're down is that they they have to spend. Like the way the reason why DKNG is down twenty percent today is uh, they're spending. It's not out of control. It's an arms race. That's what these companies are in in right now. An arms race. And so um, 
Although revenue, so uh, reported earnings Friday, fourth quarter in fiscal 2021 earnings. Uh, let's see here. Although revenue was up, listen to this. Revenue was up 1.3 billion, a 101 percent increase. The market wasn't sold on the insistence that the company will get to profitability. Losses in 2021 were up 23.5 percent versus 2020 meaning they lost $1.52 billion. Wow. So now before someone uh, emails me, uh, and by the way, my email is dan at Revere Asset. <laughs> D-A-N. That's yeah. D-A-N. Yes. Yes. But sure isn't your that. name Tim? It's like on the thing that Zach puts a no, no, no. It's D-A-N. It's confusing. But. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, it's non-accepted spelling ter- you know, <laughs> <laughs> principles. In some cultures. It's, <laughs> In some yeah, cultures, totally Tim is spelled Dan. Yes. Uh, and it's so- <laughs> contribution spelling positive. <laughs> yes. Yes, we are yeah. contribution spelling posi- positive mm. here. So... Um, this is nutty that um, people are going to get up in arms. Well, Amazon was unprofitable. They could just turn on the profit spigot. That's not the market we're in. When you want to do non-gap, when you want to do we're a losing business but gaining market share, when you want to do all that stuff, you need to do that in an expansion of what? Monetary, uh, just money. Credit expansion, money expansion. The talk now, and I and I started out the show saying that nothing's changed. Like you can go online and verify that they haven't stopped buying bonds. The Fed. Okay. The Fed. Like nothing's changed, but it's the talk of it. And if the market is truly a forward-looking vehicle by six to eight months, the market is telling you right now that it companies that want to participate in contribution positive earnings reports are going to get crushed. This is not their market. You need companies that make money. Old school, they used to call that blue sky. Did Roku have a net gain in subscribers? Eh, Still down 30% after reporting earnings. Just a bit else. The company said, but listen, (laughs) pressured by shareholders. And, And by, when they say, when you hear the words pressured by shareholders, Understand that that means pressured by bag holders. I don't know. And, and pressured by what? Bag holders. Okay. People holding the bag. People holding the bag. Well, yeah. yeah they're, basically, they're pissed. Right. They're oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I I bet you there's not. I I would love to know the analysts that have buys on this. How long has the analyst had a buy on DraftKings and not taken it off? And that's the old phrase about analysts. Don't need them in an uptrend. Don't want them in a downtrend. There you go. And so. Pressured by shareholders needing to hear, so pressured by shareholders needing to hear about profitability, the company debuted contribution profit positive. Can you imagine you're the PR person sitting in the boardroom going, dude, we are going to lay an egg on Friday morning. I need something. They order 23 pizzas. They, they've got Dr. Pepper and Cokes out the wazoo, jolt cola for caffeine. and they, it took them 12 hours, and they came up with contribution profit positive. <laughs> Listen to this. The company said it was, these are quotes, contribution profit positive in five states. Five. And would be contribution profit positive in five additional states in 2022. Contribution profit positive means, now we get to a definition, Daniel. It means gross profit minus external marketing. So, gross profit. but there's other expenses and yeah, external. Right, market. right. No, I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe me. I, hey, I, if you, <laughs> we're only going to count this one expense. Man, look, they got to fool the analysts so the analysts can't follow what they're really saying. This is nuts. <laughs> and, and so you see this in, like, imagine a croc. Is it a crocodile or an alligator? Which one does the death roll where they're like, they're going to kill they their prey? Both, both maybe. Oh, they both? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I just. I didn't know if one did it and the other didn't. No, they both do. It. They both do. They both do. It. Both do it. Mm. Which one is an alligator snub nosed and a crocodile's a pointy nose? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's some wild crats right there. That's that's it's like a, it's, it's just think of it as is a cowboy boot. The alligator's got the the square toe. Oh, really? And the alligator yeah, did and, not. And, and, and the crocodile's got what we call the roach killers. You kill a roach in the corner, it's pointed. The pointed cowboy boots, you can. <laughs> 
You you're dropping, heard that? You never heard that before? You're, no. you're, you're dropping boot knowledge? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Oh this God. show is evolved, man. It's true. <laughs> how do you kill, how do cowboys kill cockroaches in corners? Yeah. You gotta, gotta have the right boots, boots on. Yeah, gotta have the right yeah. boots you on. Need crocodile boots. You need to get that long nose. Now the question is, they, they still. Make, <laughs> I'm never gonna forget. Do they that make now. boots God. out of crocodile? Or sure, sure they do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ostrich, all kinds of stuff. Boots out of anything. By the way, there. So Remy, uh, we play music in the car, right? Like I got a playlist. Mm -hmm. Speaking of boots, he wants to hear the boots song. The boots song is "These Boots Were Made for Walking" by Nancy Sinatra. Oh my ah, yes, we have. A I thought you were going to say "Boot Scoot Boogie." Yeah. No. Oh, I'll play that for him. He might like he, that. He'll, he'll like that. that. He'll yeah. like that. So little. So uh, you know who sings that, right? Oh, um, is it Miley Cyrus's dad? No, no. Uh, <laughs> Brooks, and Dunn. Brooks and Dunn. Brooks and Dunn. Brooks and Dunn. His claim to fame. Yeah. Yes. Miley Cyrus's father. <laughs> <laughs> what is that guy's name? Billy Ray Cyrus? Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, that's yeah. Anky yeah. Breaky Heart. Yeah. That's yeah, his yeah, one yeah, hit yeah. wonder, yeah. Anky Breaky Heart. He did like a stint on uh, Nickelodeon with his daughter, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think yeah, he guessed so. He, he was in Hannah Montana. Yeah. He was on the show. She was. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, she, oh, he was in it for like a lot of it, though. It's and he's still like, married he like to his wife. Like seasons. he didn't go weird Hollywood. He stayed in Tennessee and did. Oh, really? Yeah, did familial thing, like mm. family type things. Yeah, I think he's a good dude. I could be wrong about this. And someone's like, dude, you have no clue. Again, that email is dan at revereasset dot com. If I got that all wrong. Anyway, little known fact about Nancy Sinatra. Frank's oh, daughter <laughs> follows me on Twitter. No, she doesn't. She does. Stop. She does. Can you? Okay. I can verify. It. <laughs> okay. She follows me on let Twitter. Me, let me go look at you on Twitter. Yeah, like that's this. like not my, a parody like, account. No, it's Nancy Sinatra's account. <laughs> She's got the you got the check mark and everything. Like it's her. No, it's her. I don't think she has a blue check mark. Yeah. So anyway, we're playing. We're going to uh, Taco Tuesday with the kids, and uh, Remy goes, "I want to hear the boots song." So I put on Nancy Sinatra. Uh, boots are made for walking. And Tanya's in the car. I'm like, "Hey, little known fact: Nancy Sinatra follows me on Twitter." Give me your phone. <laughs> and so she goes, she goes, I'm not going to, I, I, sometimes Tanya can be a dark cloud. And, <laughs> wow. And, and, I'm going to make sure she wow. listens to this yeah. show. Yeah. Oh, tell, tell us more. These, these are not secrets. And, <laughs> and, I, and, and I'll refer to her as the Gargamel of our house looking okay. for Smurfs. Okay. And so like, stop Gargamel me, meaning there's dark clouds over the castle. That's a good. Rainbows that's a good, and lollipops, man. That's a good man. soft hands approach to, hey, you're a little grumpy today. Yeah, well, Gargamel. She's not grumpy. Yeah, sure. she just, she'll just find the cynical way to look at it sometimes where I'm, you know, rainbows, lollipops. You know, okay. Just marching down the street, yeah, you know. Yeah. Pessimistic. Glass oh, half empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, she calls it realism. <laughs> well, all good ones do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> so I refer to it as gargamelling me up. I said, "Don't gargamel up my Smurf village, man." That's good. So she goes. She starts laughing when I tell her Nancy Sinatra follows me, and she grabs my phone. She wants to verify. No, she verifies. Yeah, yeah. I told you she follows me, and she goes. Trust, and she starts but verify. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She Ronald Reagan's me. Trust, but verify. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She Gorby's me, and so uh, or Reagan to Gorbachev. That's where that phrase comes from, and so. Um, where is is Gorbachev still alive? Would Gorbachev be retaking their Ukraine? Mm. Engine alert! Engine oh, alert! Sorry, hey, sorry. <laughs> a lot of questions. Get I just back to Nancy. Sinatra. I didn't know if Gorbachev was still alive, and someone could verify that. That'd be fantastic. And so, anyway, she starts laughing, and I go, "What are you laughing?" At? She goes, "I'm not going to gargamel and eat your Smurfs." I'm like, "Go ahead." She goes, "She follows a lot of people." <laughs> So, like, she go, I go, how many? She goes, I think it's over 100,000 or maybe over 50,000 people. Oh, my gosh. And, I, and so then I looked at her. I go, are you one of them? She goes, no, but I am. And, so, <laughs> and that describes my relationship with Tanya and Nancy Sinatra. So, anyway, DraftKings is introduced contribution positive. It, it's a nothing phrase. And you can see, I actually think when companies do this, it hurts them. And the thing is, um, you'll see stats coming out, mobile betting in New York uh, State, like records, records being set. This, the, the books are taking in so much money. Uh, let me just give you uh, what Vegas did. I believe this is just Vegas over the Super Bowl last weekend. I'm doing this from memory. They took in over like $151 million, Okay, And if I'm wrong, uh, I apologize, but it, it's, it's over $100 million. But they only kept, and, and this actually shocked me, how much they paid out. They only kept 15 million of that. 
That's not. I thought it would be more. No, no, no. They they take a ten percent cut. No, no. They're they're they, the, one hundred and fifty million is fifteen million. Right, but I thought it would be more. I thought more people would be losing bets. Like I thought there'd be more profitability, or or more revenue, well, all off of that one hundred and fifty one million. I I thought there would be more. Ten percent commission's pretty good on a. No, I, a I quick one day deal. I, I, I know, I know. I, I understand what you're saying. I just thought it would be more. I thought yeah. they'd be keeping more. And then it got me thinking it's about intentional that they don't. They adjust the line so that half people bet on one and half people bet on the other. Well, that's so that you know they what don't you, lose. That's the that, and Don brings up a great point that I wasn't thinking of. That if they don't give you the the, the lion's the, share of the profits, you're, they, size, you yeah. you're not going to go back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're not going to go back to the you. You got to wait. You it's it's golf. Like you, if you don't hit one good golf shot around, you're just not going like, to. You know go it, back. that that is a tougher business because I'm sure there's intimidate because they don't want to go any lower. In other words, think about it. A discounted upstart could try to do a booking enterprise where you just do five percent. You don't keep ten. Well, that's what and you undersell cut people. You get too much. That's pushback. what DraftKings is doing, and that's what and and Penn, Penn, Dave Portnoy argues for Penn. He's kind of the voice for Penn, really. Right. That well, we don't do that. We have me, you know, and he's the face of Penn gambling for the most part. Him and Barstool, um, but they still have these teasers. Like they still have, um, if you follow Portnoy, like the Overs Club and a whole bunch of other stuff um, that we don't need to get into. But this kind of screwy accounting. You got to stay away from it. Like this isn't your opportunity. Like what th- this is, this is definitely buyer beware. And so, uh, you know, we can talk about this a little bit more, but I really think we need to address um, something else that's screwy. Uh, one, Danny's shirt. Um, oh yeah, whoa. I got it. I brought the Fed shirt. There it is, right here. That's, whoa! Hey, look at we that. Were talk about the Fed again. And by yeah. Fed, Danny doesn't mean the last meal he's eaten. Uh, yeah, Danny. <laughs> Federal Reserve shirt. I got something for you here, Daniel, that'll lead into. So what I want to do is, we, uh, by the way, last week's show was super, oh, super duper popular. Before I do that, uh, in, in two minutes, I want to go to Hunter here real quick because I need, I need to ask him something. In two minutes, Danny's going to re-explain um, how the Fed's uh, inter, inter-meetings, like that they set the overnight bank rates, can affect the Fed's fund rate. I want you to re-explain that. All right. This time, I want you to use uh, smaller words and even shorter sentences. So act like I'm talking to you. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, tell me. A, does anyone ever remember that scene from The Office where Oscar, like I'm fine. Uh, yeah, Oscar, right. I'll, Oscar I'll put is my hat on. <laughs> yeah, like Oscar's trying to explain to Michael that he's bankrupt, and he's like, "Explain it to me like I'm five. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. a meme if you want to Google it. Uh, Hunter, I want to talk about some growth stock growth stock destruction right now. Interesting development in SPAC world. And I don't know if it means anything, and it might not mean anything, but uh, Chamath uh, Palia Papatia. Did I say that right? Chamath. Uh, they, most people just call him Chamath. Chamath, yeah. They just call him Chamath. Um, stepped away from the board of space, which. Um, mm. Final cut. Well, for him. <laughs> uh, so you can see space hits 62.8. Uh, and I understand their shareholders are looking for uh, profit at pos- uh Profit contribution somewhere along the way. What states are they profitable? 62.8 uh, to 8.43. Real quick, Hunter, give me 62 some. 62 to 8. Oh, 29 I've or 64. I've got some nasty ones for you here. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, well, so I've got, I've got some smaller ones, kind of like space, but there's also been some like mega cap growth destruction as well. I know we've talked about it, but pull up PayPal just for the sake of this conversation. This is two hundred billion dollars wiped off of PayPal's market cap in less than six months, or roughly six months here. So the growth stock destruction was not just the SPACs or just small caps or just the speculative biotech type of names in the small cap hemisphere. There, I mean, pull up Square. This is also a massive company that was a pretty decent component of uh, of the market here. I mean, this, these are huge companies, hundred billion dollar companies that have had. Huge declines. We already mentioned Roku. Tim, pull up Roku. That's down 80% over the last six, seven months from a, a high of around 500 to today trading around 100. Wow. So Kathy Wood just bought a, uh, bought the dip on that. Let's see how that works out. Today she's yeah. down. Yeah, um, she's down tremendously. Yeah. So there's, it, 
Although I think there's a, everybody is kind of aware that, oh, there's been a ton of these small companies hurt. Obviously small caps were the big laggard in 2021, but we've, we've seen that over the last six months make its way into the mega caps too in an extremely fast and destructive way. So I just wanted to point that out, but I got a few more for you that are interesting, yeah, yeah, especially please. because, uh, go ahead and pull up a firm. This one is especially interesting given news. Uh, this one was $83 on the day that they had their little EPS fiasco. I talked about yep. this in the video last night too, My but goodness. just talk about a sign of the times in the market we're in. This was $83 a week ago, roughly. I think the 10th is the earnings day there. Um, and then today we're $36. My so goodness. That's cut in half again. There is. Yeah. So there, I mean, and this is just I, maybe a microcosm of the volatility and some of the craziness, the really sharp swings up and down we've seen in these stocks. But a firm, I mean, just absolutely brutal here in a very short time period. You already had DraftKings up. Uh, Shopify, another really big name that has been taken to the woodshed. I think Shopify has gone from uh, 15, 1700 all the way to 600 ish, 700 ish here today. We are so seeing some of these stocks re rated. If your PE yeah, is 80, I mean, these are precipitous. Yeah, if your PE is 80, they're going to get it down to 40. No. I do. I actually have you're a few ringing a few out the blue sky. What's that? Go ahead, Hunter. I'm sorry. I to, you're good, man. I want to pull this one up just because uh, I was recently in Denver and I saw these everywhere throughout the city and on my GPS. So pull up CHPT charge point. Um, and these are just charging vehicle stations. And I guess they're making their way into uh, Denver. I don't know. Uh, but I saw these charge point things popping up all over the place. This is a, a SPAC that's gone from 50 to nearly $10 here. And most of your SPACs that had that starting price of $10, most of those are below that starting price. Now, there is a lot. I don't know how you find that exact data, um, but tons and tons of names below that. Pull up RIDE, R-I-D-E. This is Lordstown Motors, an EV start, or a SPAC from a while back from 31 to 3 or $2 here. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's destruction everywhere. SPACs, what's, what's smaller Clover companies, Health? big companies. Clover Health is uh, C-L-O-V. That's right. Okay. See, this is, I mean, that was a $30 at one, at one, at one day, that was a $30 stock in 2021. That's also a Chamath, I believe. Uh, yeah. I think that's a Chamath one too. What's to but ironically, is, do you know, toast is, like if you ever pay, um, at a restaurant, yeah, I actually saw my first toast in Denver. Oh yeah. What is well. it? T O S T T O T. Yeah. What's that? T O S T. Yeah. Okay. I had it. You had it. My goodness. Like it's a, it's an all encompassing. So if you're a independent restaurant, like it, it does reservation, it does everything for you in theory. Um, my goodness. And then, uh, you know, like even so it's kind of like open table or whatever, uh, a little bit more, it's a payment system as well. I don't know if open tables, a payment yeah, it's system. like they bring it to your, uh, table where you yeah. just like, you pay, you tip right there. You get up and it's like in it's Europe, they do that. Having to give your card to the waitress Server. or waiter or go up yeah. to somewhere. Um, yeah. there's also, uh, what dash. That oops, Dash reported, and they had a, a real positive report. But look at look at how that that report got sold right off. They were up at one twenty nine, one thirty, on Wednesday night, and now um, just you just you just can't hold moves. And you're seeing, and if you don't understand this, stock nerds, this whole quantitative tightening phase. That look, Danny, I I want to be real clear. Danny, when he laughs, he's being cynical, and I, I, I'm not being facetious for one bit. When he says they're not going to do that, like, look, it, it, Danny doesn't believe that they're going to be able to do that because the market's going to readjust their perceptions. Uh, uh, the market's going to take. The Fed will say uncle at some point. Yes. But the only way the Fed says uncle and doesn't tighten is if the market kind of sells off enough. Yeah. And so you need to understand that, that they are, the market is a self policing vehicle, meaning uh, they're going to get the stocks down to an acceptable price to earnings ratio, a multiple, they're going to get the stocks down to a multiple that the market deems appropriate for this economy. Yes. Going forward. And that means that uh, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to do two things at one time and that hasn't been done. They're going to shrink the balance sheet and they're going to raise rates at the same time. It's not, it's not one or the other. In 2018, they were just going to do one. It was raise rates in 2022. And by the way, that got killed. 
couple months later, we did one. Yeah, rate. you know, but it's also hard to raise rates <clears throat> while you're still buying bonds because that keeps the interest rate but, down. But that's the whole problem. <laughs> that's why stocks are getting re-rated because they're going to do two things that they haven't done. And, and, and so now it's, it's kind of like going back to headline chasing. Like I just got a headline across the transom that said, a car bomb goes off in uh, Ukraine. Is this the Russian false flag? Okay. And so um, whether they can manage to do two things at once, you got three Fed speakers out there that are going to confuse the issue today as well. Um, you're seeing stocks being re-rated, and that's what matters the most. And so you have to have buy and sell rules. You have to. And Don, Don and Hunter can get into that, like what they're doing in the portfolios here at Revere uh, in a moment. Real quick, Danny. Speaking of the Fed, mm -hmm. the Fed feeds itself. The Fed is fed. The Fed will never go without. The Fed will always do what's in the best interest of the Fed. Fed staffers traded amid the 2020 stimulus. Staffers, not, not just presidents, right? Staffers. And let me tell you some of these trades, Daniel. This is abhorrent. Like, this is. So egregious. Almost as bad as Congress. <clears throat> Danny, <laughs> Danny, what I'm about to read to you is so egregious. And when, when um, I am a very uh, pro, I'm pro, I'm, pop, I'm a populist, I would say. Like, I, I can't stand this. You Teddy Roosevelt, you. I can't stand the yay for me, hell with you mentality that permeates so much industry. Like, it, this is not a fair system. The Fed is not a fair system. What's happening and what I'm about to expose to you, it's a really good tease I'm doing, right? It's because I didn't go to that sad school you went to in San Antonio. I went to the Kennedy School Broadcasting upstairs. Now, wasn't locked in someone's basement asking for skin lotion. It puts the lotion on its skin in San Antonio. Daniel, economist. Economist. Hmm. What a word. You know, in the history of economists, there's never been a good stock trader until this gentleman, John Steele. Notice economists do economy. They don't do stock picking type things. Some of your Paul Tudor Jones, stock trader, not economist Paul Tudor Jones. Economist John Stevens and Diana Hancock, both currently senior associate directors in the Fed's research and statistics division. They're, they're, they just want their staple to replace. They're in office space. Reported in disclosure forms a series of trades in February and March of 2020. According to financial disclosure forms reviewed by the journal, the transactions by these two economists with access to the central bank's policy deliberations, private information, insider trading, Daniel. Uh, transactions, uh, Jerome Powell signaled in late February a monetary policy pivot in response to worsening risk to the economy. So Mr. Stevens reported 46 financial trades on February 27th. And in two days, this Stevens fella traded 46 times on the 27th and 28th, buying and selling individual company stocks, mutual funds, and other investments. His disclosure form showed. He reported, Daniel, 566 trades that year. When does he work? There's 200. How many days are in a year? I said 200. I meant 365 days. Well, how many trading days? No, uh, yeah, that's what I was. That's what my brain uh, was started to default to. There's three. There's 225 trading days at, on average per year. This dude traded 566 trades that year, making his list of market trades the most active among 88 senior Fed board staff whose forms were reviewed by the journal. On the 27th, Miss Hancock reported a sale of over one million dollars in iShares Edge. MSCI, USA Quality Factor Exchange Traded Funds, which holds shares in selected companies. She reported the purchase of between $500,001 and a $1 million of shares in the same fund on March 18th. And by the way, if you don't know when the market bottomed, it's the end of March into the beginning of April. These were among 14 trades she reported in her 2020 disclosure form. And you think we're all playing by the same rules. But some, somebody, somebody has to be held to account. Jerome Powell. Well, you got to change the laws first. Right now, well, that's the, whole, that's the problem, right? It's not illegal. 
But but there it's are not <coughs> for Cong- so Congress made it illegal to insider trade for about three months after two thousand and eight because everybody found out that they got out of the way and then got in right at the bottom and everybody was pissed and so they made a law and then they took it away just three months the, later middle of the night saying oh it's because think the about these hardworking families that listen to the show yeah, these yeah. people that trade they go to work they're they're told just put money in your four hundred one like you're not we're not playing by the same rules and that is it. Infuriating. This, this I, I haven't heard anything about this. I mean, Nancy Pelosi, I understand, is, uh, and I'm not being facetious. Uh, 200 she, million. I, well, no, well, oh, yeah. She, but apparently she wants to get rid of it. Like, uh, who was the presidential candidate that uh, um, Bernie Sanders didn't like? Um, the, the female senator from, is it Connecticut? We're not, li- not, li- not, not talking about Palin, are no, you? No, Warren. Warren. Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> Warren, Warren. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. She had this right. Like, I know a lot of people don't care for Elizabeth. Like, yeah, look, this isn't a political show. But yeah, she but, had. But, but I don't care about Congress because they're doing it too. Don't, but, don't. Congress are yeah. pointing fingers at the Fed and other people, and right. they're doing the same damn thing. So but she can. had it right. She, a couple years ago, I think when we used to do the show. So we're in a studio now. Uh, and, I, and, and here's the, the secret, stock nerd. I used to do the show with Danny in this back closet because we sat like two feet from each other. You can't see it, but Danny's, it's still the same distance. And and the intimacy that Danny and I had by doing this show in a closet, I thought led to a better show than in the studio that Danny's former business partner had built because he used to sit over here where I'm sitting and the producer sat a little further back than where Zach was sitting. And it felt open and hollow and just kind of vapid. Whereas uh, the show that Danny and I would produce in this back closet, I thought was more lively and quick, like a jolly old elf that we know as St. Nick. But it, it, it felt more, um, it just felt better. But anyway, um, I went on that rant about that. Well, it was, also, it was also audio only, and you had that theater of the mind thing going. Very it was a big true. part of it. Yeah, Very like true. it was just, you had to imagine it. And that, yeah, but, uh, yeah. but when we used to do the show back in that closet, Elizabeth Warren was talking about getting rid of She was right, man. But on, on this one thing. Uh, oh, I don't, you know, look, yeah, I, right. I, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's right. right on this. Yes. Get rid of it. Get rid of it all. You should, you should be able to have blind trust and, and have outside, like you just, it's just a blind trade. It's what it is. I don't care about that. But, but 566 trades, that's insider trading. Daniel, if you got inside information on companies and traded off of it, even if you didn't work there, you would go to prison. They would, st- well, CFA would strip my designation. I would get in trouble and I would get The CFA up would you, strip your designation? Some dude always, in prison would strip your yeah, pants. Right, right. Well, they, right. <laughs> Insider trading has always been against the rules, CFA ethics, and they, the SEC regulators. You're worried come about in, the CFA? Come, come, on, come in six, and, and, uh, and ten years later and adopt their. I'm principles. worried about. I'm worried about Prison Mike. <laughs> Good. Everybody you, should be worried about Prison Mike. Dude, you're you're. Can you put that guy? Is that is that not allowed on the uh, title card, Prison uh, Mike? What is uh, from the office? Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll t- I can put Prison Mike. Oh yeah, Prison yeah, Mike, yeah. Steve Carell. Yeah, I can yeah. do that. Yeah. Like. <laughs> They're going to take my designation. Let, you, let that be your battle cry. It was being very, very prison. difficult to get. And I'll tell you what is wrong. <laughs> as, as long as, hey, listen, as long as I follow their ethics, I'm going to stay out of prison anyway. I don't have to worry about the SEC. This is your concern in going to prison, that they took your CFA uh, here's designation. Here's what I'm saying. The SEC, <laughs> Can we? The, the SEC has lots of rules that actually aren't, that actually, that should be rules that aren't. They're not, they're, you know. I love the twists and turns that this show takes, that you are... Man, I'm in prison, but they took that damn CFA designation. Yeah, it's really hard to get. I studied 20 days for that damn thing. But 20 days. <laughs> you would? Would you rather go to prison than have your? That was three years, brother. Three years makes a Harvard MBA look like chump change. A prison sentence for some. <laughs> Makes a Harvard MBA look like chump change. It does. See how I brought that full circle? Uh, there you go. All right, Hunter. What you got, yes, man? Yes, sir. Oh, I didn't go to. I'm sorry, Danny. Real quick, Fed Fed inter, inter- meeting. I I screwed that all. All up. right. Well, so what the Fed does is, you know, they can. So they've got a thing called the discount window. Mm-hmm. That's the borrowing window that member banks borrow directly from the Fed. Okay. So they and they can borrow it for 30 days. So the discount window is is normally. Slightly above the Fed funds rate. The Fed fund, even though the Fed funds rate and these guys on CNBC and Bloomberg always talk about the Fed funds rate like that's the 
overnight lending rate that the Fed actually sets. That's the overnight lending rate that the banks charge each other to get their reserve requirements. So it's really a negotiated bid-ask rate, Fed funds rate. The discount window is directly, or the discount rate you borrow directly from the Fed. Now, the Fed is not a government agency. Let me repeat that. The Fed is not a government agency. It's owned by the member banks. It's a cartel like OPEC. So it's meant to actually protect the member banks. You think it's to protect your deposits. That's how it was sold to get passed in the first place. But in any event, if the Fed wants to raise rates, mm -hmm. they there's a couple different mechanisms. Number one, they can say the banks have reserve requirements. So for every dollar on deposit, you've got to have five cents or four cents of reserves. So you got to keep a nickel for every dollar you have on deposit. You can lend out the other 95 cents. If they increase that to 10 cents, now they've increased the reserve requirements each bank needs to have on deposit, making it less lending ability. Therefore, it raises rates. It, it, it bids up the price of, the, of dollars to borrow. If they lower the reserve rate, which increases the risk, because if you get too low to where you don't have to have any reserves, you can have a run on the banks. In any event, that would be a loosening thing. So you got the reserve requirements. That's the first thing. Second thing is the discount window where they just say, by proclamation, we're raising rates by a quarter percent. When they do that, that's a wink and a nod to the, Fed, the member banks, the big, big Federal Reserve banks, to raise their federal funds overnight lending rate by a quarter percent. Because look, they're like the bookie. They just want to make the VIG. They're the go-between between between the Fed and everybody else. So they make a little commission buying and selling the bonds from the Fed, buying bonds from the Fed or selling bonds to the Fed, depending on which direction the Fed wants, wants to go, right? So if you don't play ball with the Fed, if you don't do what the gorilla wants, you don't get invited to the party next time. So if the Fed raises the discount rate, the member banks just follow through with the Fed funds rate. It's just a given. Okay. So that's really how that, that goes. That's not explained very well. Dur and I said this last show, during the crisis of 1880, uh, 1987, the real estate crisis, one way they bailed out the, the banks and the, the, a lot of the SNLs went under is they lowered the discount rate below the federal funds rate so these banks could actually borrow from the Fed for 30 days and lend it overnight at a higher rate, giving them a guaranteed profit. So they, did, they bailed them out without actually calling it a bailout. In 2008, during the economic crisis, they just gave banks billions, hundreds of billions of dollars, just shored up their balance sheet and, and basically gave them a bailout, which is really the main reason the Fed was created in the first place, if the member banks got over leveraged. Now, the very last thing is called the free reserves or the excess reserves in the banking system. Mm -hmm. That is related to that reserve requirement I was telling you about. They got to keep five cents of every dollar. Anything over that five cents, anything over that minimum reserve requirement is called excess reserves. That means the bank can go lend that out. So if the bank has 50% of their money, their excess reserves just sitting there, they're not making anything. They've got incentive to go lend it out to make money. So the more free reserves they have, the looser money becomes. People, the lower the rates become because people want to borrow money and the banks are lending it out to make money. If So if the Fed wants to increase the money in the banking system, right. they call up the member banks and they say, member banks, we're going to buy bonds from you. Here's billions of dollars in cash. We're taking it out of the vault. Give us those treasury bonds back. They buy those bonds, all of a sudden, the, bond, the banks are flush with money. They got a ton of money, and now they got to go lend it out. That loosens the money supply. Conversely, they can say, banks, you're going to buy bonds from us. They give them bonds. The banks pay the Fed. The Fed takes that money out of the system, and now the banks have less money. So they manipulate it with the banking system. Now, the buying, the thing that you're talking about with they were just buying bonds to drive down the interest mm -hmm. rates, they were literally just printing money and, and sticking it in the system. There really was not a, uh, so, yeah. so the buying and selling of bonds, the legitimate way they were doing it, that's called open market operations, okay? And that's how they manipulate it. But here, is, here in lies the problem, and here's one of the crux 
that you were alluding to last show and earlier today. They've spent trillions of dollars. They spent a bunch of money trying to, quote, grease the wheels and, and, and stimulate. And you can't really exchange real growth with funny money printed growth. And so what the stock market and the bond market, by the way, is doing is they're actually adjusting price. They're coming down because they're looking at future growth and going, wow, the blue sky, the future growth is not there anymore. These, these PEs, these prices are too lofty. We need to bring the, 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 the growth is not there. And that's why it's adjusting. Uh, interesting fact, I think Don even tweeted about it or, or liked some tweet on it. In the last six months, really, gold's been the only major asset class that's been in the, in the bonds are down, stocks are down. It's, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough mm-hmm. environment. So now the Fed has got to figure out how they're going to raise rates to stop inflation mm-hmm. without completely um, collapsing the, you know, the, the markets, both the stock market and the bond market. But here's one of the stories. That's go- you know, the, here's what they're talking about. So the aggregate bond index is down, right? Now, the, the argument or the story the Fed is giving is that if inflation is temporary, i.e., a.k.a. transitory, that's what they call it, right? And they're saying it's caused by supply demand, supply chain issues. It's caused by this supply disruption. Now, there has been some su- supply disruption. We've talked about that at nauseum. But a lot of it is also caused by the printing of money not having the desired effect. So, in other words, a lot of the printed money has caused inflation. They don't want to address that. They don't want... They don't, they, nothing to see here. It's not because we printed $2 trillion of funny money. It's because of supply chain issue. So if they're correct that it's just supply chain issue, you theoretically could have interest rates rise a little bit, slow demand. I mean, but if it's not, you could have some serious stagflation. Now, this guy wrote an article, and he was talking about that if it's a supply chain issue, and if the Fed rose interest rates, and they maxed out at 3.25, right now the key bill, the short-term treasury bill, is 2%, mm-hmm. okay? He's saying if you rose it to 3.5%, 3.25, excuse me, which is actually an 80% increase from where it is right now, that's a big move, then, then he said then you, could be, then you could have prices pull back, yields be attractive again, and it would, then the bond market could rally from there. The question I have is, yeah, but how much pain do you have to go through to do that? See, that's why I was saying they're in a Hobson's choice. It's a tough choice right now because how do you kill inflation without killing the stock and the bond market, without raising rates too fast or too furiously? Yeah. And so the, back to your point, though, even though they're talking about rates, I'm going to be watching <clears throat> their feed. I'm going to be watching their actions to see if the free reserves actually go down because if they're truly tapering, mm-hmm. if they're going to taper and stop the bond buying and make the banks tighten up, th- th- both of those things should happen. Their balance sheet should shrink. Their interest rate should rise. Right. And then we'll see what happens. Interesting. As you were talking, um, Don, did, uh, is there a Fed speaker or something going on at- Markets went and hit their lows for the day, and the VIX futures did not hit their highs. That's uh... I haven't I haven't seen any news. The VIX was up quite a bit yesterday, so maybe front running today a little bit. May have preceded the move. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting, Hunter. What you got, brother, this week? I got a pretty good bit. Um, a little bit different than my normal material. Uh, a little bit more focus on industry groups, but I think it's important because it tells a really good story of what's actually going on in the market and where the strength actually is. Uh, But first, I wanted to address uh, something you covered at the very beginning of the show. You talked about there wasn't necessarily crazy volume. There wasn't like really awful ticks yesterday, but the selling just continued as the day went on. And you said what I said as well in the video yesterday is there was a real lack of buyers. And I thought uh, people watching this might say, well, how do you know it's a lack of buyers? What do you mean by that? And Uh, When there's huge volume flushing something down or breaking, obviously there's a lot of transactions going on, right? That's what volume is, shares traded. When you see something like yesterday, Tim, if you want to pull up a five-minute chart of SPY and look at yesterday or something like that, 
we just bled all day long, kind of slowly. Um, and obviously it accelerated towards the end of the day, but it was just like, there was nobody that wanted to buy. And the best way that I could describe yesterday's intraday price action is there was plenty of sellers and very few buyers. That's what it felt like as the day wore on. And obviously that thesis accelerated as the day went on. And so it's just like nobody was really stepping up. There wasn't really a whole lot of big volume coming in to try and change the intraday direction. And I think that's, I just wanted to provide a little bit of insight as what that means is uh, when we say, I felt like there was no buyers, there's only sellers. That's kind of uh, just the best definition I can give. So moving on past that, I'm, I'm gonna cover the top industry groups very quickly here, Tim. Uh, really the top 10, I'm gonna move through them swiftly. Uh, within MarketSmith. And so this is going to tell you the story of where the strength in the market is, where stocks are approaching their 52-week highs, and it's going to be a recurring theme. So let's get into it. Uh, number one industry group, oil and gas Canadian. Uh, Tim, will you pull up CNQ? And obviously oil, oil stocks are very strong. Uh, Hold on, this we, is we know that, chart. So <laughs> Let me get this on the you're daily. Good, you're good. <laughs> so these, this is a stock <clears throat> that looks really great. New highs, uh, new 52 week highs here, right? We know oil stocks have been strong. There is going to be a good bit of oil in here <clears throat> in these top 10. So I'm not going to pull up a stock for each group, uh, but CNQ, this is the number one leading stock in the number one leading industry group in MarketSmith. Number two is Energy Coal. You don't have to pull anything up from there, but just notice the theme. There are a lot of commodity related stuff in here. Number three, oil and gas drilling. Number four, Oil and Gas International. A uh, good example here is ConocoPhillips. We've also got number five, Oil and Gas U.S. Exploration. Uh, DVN is a good example there. Pioneer Resources, a lot of the names we're familiar with, we've covered on the videos. Uh, number six, Oil and Gas Field Services. We talked about those being really strong recently as well. Halliburton, Schlumberger. Number seven, oil and gas integrated. That's your Exxons, your Chevrons. Number eight, Kim Ag. Uh, that's your CFs, your NTRs, your Mosaics that we've talked about. And then lastly, transportation uh, ship is right there in the top 10. That's your ZIM, your Starbolt. So all of these names are commodity inflation related type of names. Whereas you don't see, you're not seeing software. You're not seeing you know, cybersecurity, none of that stuff is in the, in the top performing industry groups or sectors of the market. And I know that may seem obvious, but when you just break it down and look at the sectors, look at the industry groups, it tells a clear story of where the strength is and is not. And obviously oil and gas, commodity related things, um, those are where the strength is for the time being. And they may end up being the piano players or the last ones to fall. Uh, but right now they're trying to hang in there and a lot of those charts still look pretty good. So uh, I just wanted to go through that. I know that was kind of a lot of information, uh, but that's something we don't always talk about on the podcast uh, or the, the nightly videos as far as the top industry groups. And I thought it painted a pretty interesting picture. Um, that's a real good- Last uh, two things. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tim. I was going to say- just oh, I, just, I had two- uh, My bad, man. No, I was going to tell people at home, just pause the video, rewind it, or rewind the podcast, write them down. Or Hunter at Revere Asset, if you want to yeah. uh, pick his brain anymore. Than that. Sure. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah, last two. So, and honestly, these may have may have started to look a little crappier as the uh, video has gone on here. Uh, but one of the growth names that was actually hanging in there okay was Docs, D O C S, Doximity. This is a cloud based platform for the medical industry. Um, but it had a gap up after obviously a big decline, 107 to 40 there. But it had a gap up, and it's one of very, very few gap ups that have actually held okay ish. You can see it's kind of riding the eight day there. Uh, so one of one of a very, very small group of, of growth stocks that are actually looking OK. Another name, not necessarily a growth stock. It'll be uh, Don will probably talk about it in the video tonight on the 21 over 21. JNPR, uh, Juniper, um, more of a value type of name uh, in the tech space. Uh, but it's trying to hang on to those moving averages very close to 52 week highs. So there are some bright spots out there, but uh, it just continues to narrow and narrow, like we've said for the last couple of weeks here. So that's all I got, man. Super. Uh, real quick, uh, Don's going to do the, uh, Hunter mentioned it, the 21 over 21. You find all the videos, like if I reference a video or a podcast, find them on our website here. Just go to revereasset.com. Every video, every podcast we've ever done is archived here. It's the best way if you want to back test us, see how we handled any market condition going all the way down to uh, 20, the beginning of 2014. There's 210 pages here of archives that you could actually search through uh, 
COVID, uh, that 2018 period, 2015 August, uh, which was um, the Greek debt and something in China and so a whole bunch of other stuff. And if you want to get a hold of Hunter, uh, contact us page right here, um, Hunter at RiverAsset.com. Just give us a call you find Hunter. Real Wealth Don does what Hunter mentioned, the 21 over 21 every Friday. I'm curious what's on the 21 over 21, Don, and then uh, I reckon you're going to talk about the portfolios a little bit. Yeah, surprisingly, 19 of the 21 are still above their 21-day moving average from last week. So we'll update that list uh, in tonight's video. And another, a new segment that I'm going to do, probably just a one-time segment, but called Gap the Crap, a review of 24 stocks that have gapped up on earnings. And it was, a, uh, in, in most cases, time to sell them. Uh, sellers took advantage of the gap. They were bid up overnight. Uh, sellers took advantage and took them down into various levels of support. And that's indicative of the type of market that we're in right now. There's a time to buy strength and there's a time to sell strength. This has certainly been a time to sell strength. So tune in tonight on the Friday night video. Update uh, what we have for last week. Update uh, portfolio changes that we made. Show the tail of the tape for the two uh, bull and bear scenarios and uh, the 2121 and 24 gapped crap video uh, stock charts. And uh, you can find those again, uh, Daily Market Insight. If, by the way, to subscribe, it's easier. We don't spam you. You're not in a sales cycle. That's not who we are. We just send you the videos at the end of the trading day. Uh, hit subscribe. Uh, and then that Don's video will just drop in your inbox. The moment uh, we get it posted or we, we send it out. Danny, you want to say something? Well, yeah, so I just want to make a couple points. Number one, you know, uh, Hunter was talking about all the, the strongest sectors, the top five, and they're all around oil and energy. And yeah, and you wouldn't think of that with all this talk of the green and moving to electric and all that stuff. And that's one reason following the charts is important. Um, um, I did want to bring up one side note that we're, I'm going to talk about probably next week is these tokenized stocks. So they're actually trying to bring out these tokenized stocks mm -hmm. where you can buy with the cryptocurrency, right? And so you've got to be careful though, because these stocks, you don't actually own the underlying stock. You don't actually own it. It's a promissory note by the, by the custodian based on the return. So it's kind of like an ETN, an exchange traded note. Now, the, the, some of them, aren't even actually tokens, they're synthetic tokens or synths, if you're cool, if you're in the know with these cryptos. But, and lastly, some of them are very over-concentrated. So like, there are certain ones, there's like Tesla's got one, um, 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 you know, some of the big, big players, uh, but, but a lot of them are owned by like 90% of the, these tokens are owned by just a few people. And so they're very easily manipulated so far. So don't just jump in and, and get all excited and go for these yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this more next week and do a little more research on it. Okay. But we just have to, had some information come out on it. And I wanted to kind of just get Tell you what, with that, do the real short close because I got an interesting one last thing. All right, folks, listen, if you like what you heard, please tell a friend, tell a neighbor. Just send them to revereasset.com. They can sign up for our daily. They can hit subscribe and sign up for our daily market. Uh, insight newsletter that goes every night when the market is open. And then they'll also get this podcast normally Saturday morning after, uh, when it's available. Um, we won't spam them or reach out or bother them in any way. It's up to them to reach out to us. If they want, uh, have any questions, want a complimentary portfolio review, or just want a topic they want discussed, you can email any of us at dan at revereasset.com, Tim Hunter, Meryl or Don at revereasset.com. And you can always call us old school at 855 Real Wealth. And hopefully by next week, Tim, oh, the, we're we going to have the two well, new website up. Yeah, the new website should be uh, Ooh, up and active for uh, pretty cool. Yeah, for it's next pretty cool. We'll be showing that off next week on the yeah, podcast. Get a, little, yeah. get a little training on it uh, yeah, yeah. on Monday. Listen, um, this is, this is uh, I don't know if anyone saw this, uh, Kathy Wood. Uh, interview yesterday on CNBC on Thursday. It didn't go well. And, um, you know, she, it's easy to take shots uh, at someone who's, you know, 
someone who's severely underperforming after having just a stellar run. Um, and, but the, the thing that really strikes me, whether, no matter who it is, and Danny and I used to discuss this um, back when we were doing the show in the closet, which doesn't, back when we were doing the show in the closet probably isn't the best description <laughs> I, should, uh, I should use. And the sound was great. But, but like yeah, there the were acoustics. stories of value investors going under. Like they would just close fund. They were, they were griping and complaining. It was a growth <laughs> stock market. And these value investors were just getting, you know, their, their funds were close because people were withdrawing money. People aren't withdrawing. Like, this is not a fund. She doesn't run a fund, but uh, she runs an ETF, several of them. But um, this, is, this is just emblematic of what's going on right here. And ARC sent this out. Like, it was CNBC sent her a Zoom link for the interview. And I, do, I, I'm surprised that CNBC is using free Zoom accounts. They can't be. Like, did you see this? I did see it. Uh, it could be using free Zoom accounts. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, they probably, they probably got some PA that connected it, right? Some, some producer or something, and that producer doesn't pay for it. So they were like, yeah, whatever. It won't be an hour. It'll be fine. And then they had to connect her, and it took too long, which is why you get the running out of time screen live on television. Oh, my gosh. Just, not and, good. And yeah. by the way, she was having <laughs> not I, – I, I went back and watched the interview. It's – she's defending a lot. And, and, and look. In this period, this style this is of, not a growth period. They, well, it's this stock. It's not a high multiple. Yeah. And she, but but the things that she and look, if you want to watch it, like you can Google uh, just Kathy Wood CNBC, but or this is an article from Fortune that was uh, put together. Look, she's she's saying, and, and this is this is the point that really is to be derived from here. She's saying that the market is undervaluing her stocks. She's well, maybe she's overvaluing her stock. She's arguing. So the market, and it goes back to really the theme of the show. I touched on it. Hunter retouched on it. The market is an auction. Price is truth. Where you walk in and the guy holding up flank steak is like, dude, it's 20 bucks a pound. You're like, I'm not going to pay that. And if everybody who enters the market decides not to pay 20 bucks for flank steak, you know what flank it's steak 18. is? 18. It's 18. <laughs> and if everyone says, hell no, it's going to eventually go down until someone raises their hand at eight and says, I'll pay eight for flank steak. That's what I'm comfortable with. Kathy Wood is arguing with the collective auction. And she, it doesn't matter who it is. That, who, whenever you start arguing, like if you own DraftKings and you're saying the market is getting this wrong, the only thing that's wrong is that you're not making money and you're holding on to a loss potentially. And you're, and, and, well, well, and, but it goes deeper to that because yeah. I do want to bring up a point. So for the investor listening, for you out there that is listening, what does that mean for you? Growth stocks, high beta mutual funds, ETFs, emerging markets, technology, whatever. It's not the place to be and it hasn't been for the last few months. You need to, you should have already sold if you haven't. If you, if you haven't, it's probably not too late. You need to at least lighten up and reduce risk. If you're, that's if the bottom you're, line. If you're thinking about it constantly at night, you're, it's not too late. You got you, well. The funds also they can't sell. They, they can trade one tech stock for another, but they can't move to cash. By their prospectus, they got to be fully invested in their genre, tech, small cap, whatever it is. So it's your job to know when to sell the fund. You don't just blindly buy. But, and, and kudo to Kathy Wood for this. The transparency she offers. Is amazing. Oh, like, she, listen, you, I, I've got no problems with her. She's just in, it's no, not in her. What I was going to say frame. was she sent her company sends out an email of all the trades. Yeah. So yeah. you can see at the end of the day, what she blew out of yeah. and what she bought the dip on. And that's why people, uh, I think that's what's making her a target. One, she was uber successful, but unlike all these other, and it, she's offering a level of transparency that, that, that well, we are. Let's, let's, let's back up. Let's back up. So with an ETF, and this is one thing they're looking at with the SEC. Right. So an ETF is cheaper than a mutual fund to run, okay? So it's more cost effective. But you've got to give your top 10 holdings daily. So she is required to give out her top 10 holdings every day. A mutual fund only has to do, hang on, yeah. has to do their top 10 holdings at the end of each quarter, and that's when it's subject to window dressing. And so some of the ETFs, so a lot of, People that don't want to get copycatted by like BlackRock or right. the big boys that will 
hired to try to mimic their fund and run them out of business will do mutual funds because it's not transparent. So, but the point being is she, she is more I, transparent, I know but part of it, she has to. Well, are you, do you not get her email? I'm not being, no, I do not. I do. Uh, like she, her email, and it's been like this for years. Um, it's the, it's not just top 10 holding. It's everything. It's, yeah. we blew out of, she blew out a Palantir, like towards the bottom. Yeah. Like, like it's, it's not. Uh, an ETF doesn't tell you what they bought or sold. You're, yes, the, yes, that's the, true. The user is left to try to discern yeah, right. by the fluctuation in their holdings right. and then do some uh, pseudo math to figure it out. She's right. telling you. Right. And I think in her accessibility and transparency are where they're making her targets, where there's probably a bunch of other targets out there. I'm not a Kathy Wood defender. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying, though, is when, you're, when your style is not working, she, she just... There's just no well, that happens with everybody with transparency. Yeah. And I don't know why she's Here's buying, the thing. You know. Here's I want to add something to this. Please. She said in that interview that she believes the market bottomed on January 27th. Okay, so the low on January 27th is 430950. We're currently at 4356. You know what she'll do different if we break below 4309? Nothing. Yeah. She'll continue to hold these stocks the lower the market goes, because as Dan said, her perspective says she has to be mm -hmm. fully invested in what she considers to be the innovative stocks. So she can go on and say, we think the market bottomed at 4309, but if it didn't, it doesn't matter. She's not going to do anything different. There you go. Can you I like add Dan? one comment? Yeah, in here, please, Tim? please. Just, this is uh, really quick because it's, I think it goes hand in hand with what you were saying here. So you mentioned her, her daily email where they, she puts out her buys and sells and that stuff. Just 12 to 15 months ago, people were clamoring to see what she bought and sold so they could go buy it after hours, right? Think about the fourth quarter of 2020 into the first quarter of 2021 before small caps and the art crash, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. People were going and pumping up what they saw Kathy Wood buy. And now over the last 12 months, we've seen that dynamic completely flip <laughs> where people are targeting uh shorting what she is buying now so well, there's even a short etf seen, yeah. yeah sark yeah yeah we, we've seen euphoria flip to the complete opposite in the last 12 months it's pretty wild uh, and that goes directly to, to consumer time. confidence i mean that were investor confidence Crazy. investor confidence blue sky is is going away it's cloudy skies right now great great points all right danny folks listen we'll talk to you next week on your money